We haven't heard much lately about what's been happening on the PUV modernization front. So we caught up with Department of Transportation Undersecretary for Road Transport and Infrastructure, Mark De Leon, to talk about the status of government efforts to modernize the public utility vehicle sector. Up next, Motoring Forum features highlights of our discussion with USEC Mark De Leon on the modernization program. The Public Utility Modernization Program is among the Duterte administration's priorities since day one. The PUVMP has been among the government's programs that has steadily been pushed forward by the interagency cooperation, consultation with stakeholders, and more importantly, funding from state-owned financial institutions. Effectively launched in 2017, the PUVMP aimed to replace aging and unroadworthy public utility vehicles with new, safer, more efficient, and environment-friendly units over a span of years until 2020. The government targeted 15-year-old and above public utility vehicles for replacement by brand new units that are powered by at least Euro 4 compliant engines or battery-powered electric motors. It also set standards for cabin dimensions and how seats and doors for various classes of PUVs should be configured. The standards are all meant to make PUVs safer, more comfortable, and convenient for passengers. To complement the PUVMP, the Department of Transportation approved and implemented the Omnibus Franchising Guidelines which, among others, reformed the process of granting PUV franchises. Among the more significant reforms are giving local government units the function of identifying new routes for franchising and no longer allowing the issuance of new franchises to single unit operators. So how is the PUVMP faring? Motoring Forum asked Department of Transportation Undersecretary for Road Transport and Infrastructure, Mark De Leon. Currently, uh, it's uh, the consolidation of the existing uh, drivers, operators. So we have, in fact, uh, authorized at least 480 plus uh, cooperatives already. So uh, it's a continuing process. It's a long process. We, we all know that uh, Modernization is a very long and tedious process and we chose to be that way. No? Uh, existing operators, existing drivers will be part of the program. So, unti uh, unti, uh, we're capacitating them, we're uh, teaching them the benefits of the program. So, it's a uh, process that uh, we will uh, be taking for the next two years. USEC De Leon indicated that government wants to improve the system for accepting the processing applications from cooperatives and other groups looking to participate in the PUV modernization program. It's uh, continually uh, doing accepting uh, applicants. No? And uh, in fact, uh, we recently instructed uh, LTO, LTFRB, and OTC to streamline their processes. And uh, this afternoon, I think uh, there will be meetings between these agencies under the OTR to streamline the application process. USEC De Leon also reported that local government units were now ready to submit respective local transport plans that include the identification of routes for the issuance of new franchises. Basically, we have already completed the capacity building of uh, local government units in the, for them to prepare their local public transport route plans. So we're expecting them to finalize their uh, proposed uh, route plans and uh, they will uh, give that to us for approval. So we're expecting more uh, routes to be developed by local government units. In line with the government's PUV modernization program, the Department of Transportation is working for a stricter implementation of the vehicle inspection system, as well as institutionalizing a scrapping program for old, dilapidated, and unsafe vehicles scheduled for replacement or sent to the junkyard. According to ASEC Mark De Leon, the MVIS and the scrapping program can be implemented with the help of the private sector. Uh, basically, this is the system, no? And this is the motor vehicle inspection system. No? Motor vehicle inspection system will see to it that all roads, all vehicles that will run our roads are safe and reliable, roadworthy. So this is the system that uh, we're pushing. Uh, private sector can run the system. Uh, private sector will be accredited to run the system and uh, we're just finalizing the draft of the guidelines. On the scrappage, no, uh, we're looking at uh, private sector to also run scrapping facilities scrapping facilities for those not roadworthy anymore. So uh, we will be uh, accrediting 
uh, a list of uh, scrapping facility operators to run that system. The Department of Transportation is continually working to achieve the stated goals of the PUV modernization program. Uh, basically, we, we want to achieve safety, efficiency, reliability, and environmental protection. So that's the key policy directives that uh, we're addressing in this uh, PUV modernization. With this PUV modernization, you can expect uh, all of those policy directives to be uh, uh, pursued by uh, DOTR. The modernization of the public utility vehicle sector looks to be moving forward and in the right direction. There appears to be support from the PUV sector itself with a growing number of cooperatives signing up to join the program. Here's hoping the modernization program gains more momentum heading toward year-end and well into 2019. And that's it for this week's Monitoring Forum, courtesy of Suzuki Philippines. You. I'll miss you too. So, why are you back? I didn't want to miss you.